Let's grab this decorative plaster piece with the opposite side. Gradually moving further forward on my desk as I use my mouse as I do this. I'm going to make sure I pull that back enough until it's just sitting in front of the um, brickwork. Uh, here. Let's see if we can use one of these decorative pieces here. here. Mm, again, we'll see if we can use one of the decorative pieces, but it may be, um, I just want to pull that column over a bit too, it looks like. It may be a bit too narrow for one of them, but we'll see. It is a little narrow. Um, I'm just going to pull it back on the wall and see if we can't make it work. I think I think we can get away with it just. Uh, so we don't actually need this plain piece here. We can get rid of that. Let's bring the ceiling in though. Again, these ceiling pieces are using parallax mapping, so if they look a bit funky sometimes, particularly as we move them, uh, it's the parallax mapping that's causing that. Bring it in. Alright, I think 
apart from the floor and the light fitting, we can move on to another room. Uh, what do we work on now? We do have one more room down here that I haven't touched yet, which is over here. Let's fix this up. Let's start by getting rid of these plants that are poking through the through the wall. I'm just going to go into my. I painted them with the foliage tool, so I'm going to go into um, pick mode in the foliage tool here to just select these want these two here that I want to remove. That's it. We don't need uh, that mode anymore. Again, I'm just going to make sure real time is turned off so OBS doesn't freak out. Let's uh, fix the window first. Uh, I think we'll start with the columns. Let's grab one of them. Sills. Select it so I don't accidentally do that again. I want to fix up the glass here as well, it's not actually sitting within the frame properly. I'm going to turn off angle snapping just temporarily. Let's uh, bring columns in for the corners as well. Yeah, I think we'll put a column in this corner here to butt it up right against the um, door frame. I 
think what I may do here too is on this column scale it in just a little just so we get more of that uh, half circle and it's not hidden in the wall let's grab one more column for that corner over there bring in some plaster work going to jump to the front of the building because I do, I do know I have two or three different sized plaster pieces so I'm just going to look around the wall here Just duplicate this one just in case this is a larger piece. I'm not sure if it is or not. this old one out of the way. I won't delete it because I'm going to be able to use it somewhere else in the room. Yeah, this piece is a bit larger. And to save scaling it and distorting my pattern too much. Although I will try it to see whether it will work or not. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to bring in plain plaster for the sides. So let's grab these two pieces here. This piece of plaster, maybe I'll be able to put two of them over on this wall. Let's have a look.
Yeah, I think we should be able to. I'm just going to duplicate it one more time. Scale them in just a little bit. some plain plaster for these two corners so let's grab one of these Scale it up just a tiny bit. Alright, we need a decorative piece here for the top of the door. Again, I'm just going to look through my browser here, it might be quicker and easier. I think we'll use this one here. that plaster ceiling again as well. back out again so I can get my bearings and work out what we've done. So we've done the front hall, the upper hall, the main room, 
uh, the two side rooms apart from the floors and the back room. What I think we'll do here is I'm just going to take a quick break for a couple of minutes guys while I grab a fresh hot cup of coffee. Uh, so I will be back in just a few minutes. I'll leave you with some of my Be Right Back epic music. It's epic because it's the name of the song. Um, I will be back in just a couple of minutes guys and then we'll continue doing some more work on our building here. Or an asset, I'm not sure what we'll do. We'll work something out. I'll be back in a few minutes though. I'll grab a fresh coffee and uh, yeah, I'll be right back in just a minute or two guys. Okay. So maybe we'll work on an asset. There is this, um, I created a um, an Art Deco lamp, which is a, a woman holding a globe. And I want to bring them in to use around the level when we start decorating, uh, placing furniture and things. So I think we'll bring her in. And then we might work on the, um, she's going to be sitting on like a decorative wooden pedestal, I guess you call it. So let's do that. Let's save this though before uh, I do anything. Because uh, again, I don't, uh, I turn auto save off on all of my software because I don't like to be interrupted while I'm working. So I must remember to save manually. Simply because uh, when you work with uh, auto save turned on, uh, it tends to hitch the program while it saves and I find that distracting. So I usually turn it off. You probably shouldn't turn it off though. <laughs> Unless you remember to save. Uh, let's jump into Max. Gee, OBS did not like that. Um, I'm going to open up the Angel, the Angel, the Art Deco statue I have. Where is it? She is this one. I'll bring the goblets in as well. Um, but we'll work on her to begin with, I think. Actually, I think the goblets are in the scene with her, so. Just going to turn off my um, safe frames here. Turn stats off as well. We'll turn off safe frame so we can see it properly. There we go. So she'll just make a really interesting looking object to be placed inside the level. She's just called Lamp, so we'll call her Lamp. And I'll make a new folder called Lady Lamp. I like to keep everything nice and organized. It makes finding things easier later on. And we'll save her. Um, I'm only going to save one of the goblets because they're the same model. They just have a different texture for the uh, green or the blue. So I'll save one and then we can just swap the texture out inside of Unreal for our different colors. So uh, blue goblet. We'll just call this one goblet, I think. Now, I'm trying to remember if um, I have normals or anything set up for this and I can't remember. So I'm going to find the textures I'm using here.
They should all be together in the one folder I have um, inside of where she was. she's being stored. So I'm just going to open that up. Where are we? Retail models is what I'm looking for. She's under what I call retail models because you, you can actually buy this model on Cornucopia or the Creative Market from my store. I'm just going to copy the textures into that other folder we just created. So I like to keep everything together. Uh, now I didn't create normal maps for her and it may be a good idea for me to do that. So what I think I'm going to do quickly is jump into, although she probably doesn't need a normal map. We'll bring her in without a normal map. We'll see what it looks like. And if, if it looks like it can benefit from a normal map, then we'll bring a normal map in. Uh, the glasses may be more so than the angel statue, has, than the uh, bronze statue herself because she is bronze. So we'll have a look. Jump back into Unreal. It's going to move that uh, floor into its own folder here. Or into our main uh, building folder. And let's import that uh, lady. I'm just going to wait for the shaders to recompile. There we go. And let's uh, open her up and have a look at her inside the engine. All right. Now, this these little lines we're seeing here, which are the other side of these uh, pieces of fabric that are hanging off the... Um, the lady herself. What we need to do is turn two-sided on because to save polygons I've removed polys from the inside of these draped pieces. Um, so we're going to need to make sure that we uh, enable two-sided on those. So metal, body, cloth, this one here. So I'm just going to make sure I turn two-sided on. Only on the cloth, the um, body doesn't require it because there shouldn't be any polys removed from the actual body. Now you see we can see both sides of her of that cloth without that problem. But we still have the benefit of saving on polygons by not having polys there. Uh, the other thing I need to adjust is the light fitting itself because we want to place a light inside of this so we're going to have to add transparency to that um, shader. So instead of opaque, I want uh, translucent. I want to add a constant by holding the one key and hitting, uh, just pressing enter. And I'm going to pump that into opacity. And I think I'll make that, we'll start at 0 0.5 and we'll go from there. Again, I'm just waiting for my shader to uh, catch up here. Now, uh, an emissive here would probably really work well as well. So I'm going to add a multiply. Take the um, color channel here, add another constant value. Uh, we'll start by making this 10. I'll pump that into the B channel of the multiply and pump the multiply into the emissive. Again, we'll just wait for our shader to recompile. I think I may up the uh, constant here to, let's try 30. All right, we're starting to get a bit more of a glow. Let's just go up to 40 and have a look. All 
I'll, I'll save that and we'll check her uh, again and have a look and see if that's improved that glow on that lamp lampshade at all. Check our opacity. That should probably work for what we want. Uh, again, I don't think she really needs um, a normal map herself. She is fully clothed, by the way. She has clothing covering her naked parts. So, Art Deco, though, they were very big on naked women <laughs> and during that period, particularly for their lamps. All right, so let's make sure we've saved everything. Um, I'm just going to pull her into this level and have a look. I'm going to do it down here in the darker part of the hallway though. So I want to uh, create a prefab of that lamp with a light and it's going to be easier if it's uh, inside a dark part of the room. Just deselect it for a minute. Now, I think I'll... <laughs> Our glow is a bit too hard here, a bit, bit too much glow. So I'm just going to knock that back a bit. We might go back to 20. Save that. And wait for Unreal to catch up. Still is with a glow. We can play with that once we actually start placing her in the level. As far as size of her goes, um, just trying to judge what a good size for her would be. Uh, she's probably not too bad the size she is. We do want to make a feature of her when we place her inside of the building. In the different spots here and there. I'll probably use her three or four times just in different spots throughout the building. Um, we can adjust her size after the fact anyway, but so let's bring in a point light. Um, I'm going to make it movable. Now, you don't need to make it movable. It's probably, if, if you're making a mobile game, you've really got to be careful of how many movable lights you can use. I don't even know if you can use any movable lights in mobile. So you have to stick to stationary. But the problem with a stationary light in Unreal is you can't have more than, I think it's either four or five stationary lights overlapping. Like if, if any of their light cone overlaps, you're going to have a problem. And that's indicated by that blue line that you can see around the outside here. If any of these overlap on a stationary light, it cancels after more than four or five stationary lights, it cancels them out. So uh, that's why I always get into the habit of making mine movable so I don't have that issue. But you won't be able to do that, like I said, if you're making a mobile game. I'm just going to pull back here on the uh, attenuation radius, make, make it uh, 400 to begin with. And make sure that this is um, sitting inside of that globe. Now, um, I'm just trying to work out the best way to do this. We do have, uh, I've, I've, got, I've created some Tiffany lamps, which I'm just going to pull one of them in and show you one of those. Uh, these two Tiffany lamps down here, good, I'm not covering them up, um, which use a, a light function. Now, there's no light function on this at the moment. I'm just going to deselect it. But these two lights I've created are using a light function. So if I pull one of them in, um, you can see that it throws a coloured light everywhere. 
and that's due to having a light function. Let's rotate that around so we get the proper angle on the wall. So that light function is uh, using the texture that we're using for the um, lampshade itself. I zoom in a bit here, you can see it. To throw coloured light around the room. Uh, and it works well for this because it has lots of different colours in the actual texture. This light though is mainly an orange, so it doesn't really need a light function. Not to say it wouldn't benefit from one anyway. Uh, so let's have a look at maybe creating a light function for it and see what it looks like. Uh, I can easily change the colour of that light to make it an orange, to make it look better blent in, to blend it in better with the uh, texture in, that it's supposed to be projecting against. But a light function will do the same thing. We'll, we'll actually create more of a, a pattern in the light to match the pattern on the dome. Um, let's look at doing that. Let's uh, jump up here to the materials and under light fittings I should have a light function that I can uh, reuse. Yeah. Uh, let's reuse this one here. So I'm just going to duplicate it. Uh, I'll call this one Lady Lamp. Light function. Okay. Going to select my light if I can here. Alright, and this is the other thing as well actually, I forgot about, you, you need to make it, any time you put, place a light inside of, um, of an object, you really have to make sure it's two-sided, particularly if you're going to be using a light function. So I'm just going to jump back to that model. And I'm going to make sure that this is actually two-sided. Save that. Okay. Now I'm going to, we have our point light here selected. If I scroll down here in the properties, there's a, a rollout here for light function. So I'm going to jump back to my light fittings here in my material uh, and I'm going to drag that lady lamp light function into this now, I don't know if you can see it but the light has taken on the color of the um, of the dome that it's sitting inside of but I want to make sure that my color is set correctly here as well <laughs> 